nature are separated. Westerners perceive wilderness as places completely unaffected by human interference. In reality, the concept of wilderness is a myth. Humans are as much a part of nature as any other plant or animal on Earth. It is important for us to realize that nature is found in places other than exotic tourist locations or within the boundaries of parks. Nature is in our backyards, between the cracks of our city sidewalks, and even on our college campuses, such as here at the University of South Carolina. But most of us walking through campus know nothing about the local species that can be found around us. It is important for us to learn about plants and animals because it is beneficial for humans to interact with nature. Like many indigenous peoples around the world, the Raramuri of Mexico practice a traditional way of living that requires harmony with the natural environment. The Raramuri believe that humans are a fundamental part of the natural world and are dependent on the earth and its natural resources. All of life is an interconnected web. All humans, plants, and animals are related to one another and dependent on one another for a harmonious cycle of birth, life, and death. The Rara Murray ethnobotanist Enrique Salmon coined the phrase kin-centric ecology to describe the mutual roles of all living things in the interconnected web of life. Rather than humans placing themselves outside nature or wilderness, many indigenous groups believe that humans are just as much a part of the natural world as all other plants and animals. Plants and animals should be treated with care and respect. In indigenous thought, the plants and animals are our kin, because we are all equal and interconnected parts of the same world. The Raramuri word iwigara most closely relates to Salmon's concept of kin-centric ecology. This word refers to the breath and souls of all things, the cycle of birth, life, and death, and the total interconnected web of life. Like many indigenous peoples, the Raramuri believe that all things have a soul and have the breath of life, and that we are all interconnected because we all share that same breath of life. The Raramuri believe that human physical as well as spiritual health are dependent on the harmony of the natural world. If a human hurts his environment, then he is also hurting himself. In the last few decades, adults and children alike have been increasingly turning to electronic media for entertainment and choosing indoor and sedentary activities in place of outdoor activities such as involvement with nature. High electronic media users are linked to decreased direct interaction with families and friends and have increased feelings of loneliness and isolation. Rates of obesity are increasing dramatically. Children who are dependent on their parents for access to natural activities often grow up without spending any free time in nature, with the result that they feel much less linked to the natural world. Since people are not interacting with the natural world, concern for nature, such as conservation and preservation of plants and animals, and understanding of biodiversity has decreased. A study of eco-literacy rates in the UK, India, and Indonesia reveals that increase in community wealth is linked to a decrease in local environment eco-literacy. In order for more emphasis to be placed on local environment conservation, it is important for local residents to be familiar with their native plant species. The knowledge of local people about native plants can be very useful in preserving biodiversity and conservation. It is important to learn about local species because the best people to protect local areas are the local residents themselves. Given that it is beneficial in many ways to stay involved with the natural world, people should take the opportunity to learn as much as possible about local plant and animal species. On the main campus at the University of South Carolina, students, faculty, and employees coexist with a variety of local South Carolina species, but most people may not know much at all about the plants and animals they pass by every day. The following are a few plant and animal species that are common to South Carolina. Red maples are commonly known for their beautiful red colors in the fall. These trees grow all along the eastern portion of the United States and into Canada. The seeds are wind and water dispersed rather than animal dispersed, so they are typically one of the first trees to bloom in the spring with red buds along the branches. Red maple leaves and buds grow opposite from one another along the branch. Red maple is an important food source for elk, deer, and rabbit populations. Today, humans use the trees for lumber and syrup. The tree is an aesthetically beautiful addition to fall and spring colors and also an important plant for indicating seasonal change. The dandelion is a perennial flowering plant that grows all over the world. The flowers are yellow and the leaves are notched and shiny in color. Dandelion flowers open when it is sunny and close in the evening or during bad weather. The flowers are edible and have long been used for a variety of medicinal purposes in the United States by various Native American groups. Dandelions contain many important antioxidants, so they are a good addition to anyone's diet. There are many species of Smilax in the South Carolina region. Often, several different species of Smilax can coexist within the same small area, as is evident on our college campus. Smilax, also referred to as greenbriar or catbriar, is typically dark green in color with pale green splotches on the leaves. Smilax is a vine that uses clinging tendrils to climb trees such as evergreens, oaks, and maples. 
Many species have thorns along the stems, and several species produce berries that resemble small grapes. Smilax roots traditionally have been used for a variety of purposes. The plant can be made into a powder for various breads, cereals, soups, or jellies. As we walk by this plant on campus, it is interesting to know that Native Americans used the same plant as an important food and medicinal source for thousands of years. A species that you probably see every day on our campus is the Eastern Gray Squirrel. These animals can live in a range of habitats from woodlands to suburbs and even in cities. During the fall season, the squirrels bury excess food for the winter months. When food is plentiful, the squirrels give birth to litters of many young, usually twice yearly. Squirrels sometimes make nests from leaves and trees, but prefer caverns or holes in large trees such as oaks or maples. Humans and squirrels live harmoniously in the same habitat, but widespread clearing of forests can wipe out huge squirrel populations. The American robin is another species you likely see every day here during the warmer months. Robins are migratory birds, so they fly south in the winter. Robins can live harmoniously with humans because human habitats often allow for small patches of woodlands interspersed with grasslands, fields, or gardens. Robins can be recognized relatively easily by the reddish color on their breasts and the white circles around their eyes. They are important to their ecosystems because they help control insect populations and help disperse the seeds they eat. They are mostly active during the day and since they commonly co-inhabit human landscapes, you will likely see them foraging as you walk around campus. Getting to know local species is an important step in maintaining biodiversity of the world's many diverse regions. Parks and exotic destinations are not the only place to interact with nature. Even everyday local areas such as your college campus can have a surprisingly rich and diverse selection of life forms, all living harmoniously alongside humans. So next time you're walking around your local natural areas, stop and take a little time to notice the plants and animals you see. If you happen to be on the University of South Carolina's Columbia campus, then you can now identify several of our common species. So please, take the time to notice nature and get to know local species. You won't regret it.